The inmates have taken over. There's a riot going on at the vault, the Rocky Mountain prison for superpowered criminals. The prisoners, led by the murderous Venom, are in charge. It's not the first time such a thing happened. Warden Truman Marsh vows it will be the last. Marsh has sworn that before a single convict escapes the prison, he will blow the place and everyone in it sky high. He has the means and the will. It is up to the Avengers to break into the impenetrable fortress, free the hostages, recapture the inmates, and defuse the bomb. Dispatched along with the Avengers are the mutants of Freedom Force. But whose side will these former villains take when the going gets rough? In the tradition of great prison and disaster movies comes Death Trap, The Vault, on today's Venom Vlog. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Venom Vlog. This is episode 370, and today we are finally going to wrap up our Venom Versus, like the whole arc that we've been doing, where we've just been finding all these like random one-offs and like little stories that Venom has appeared in in other people's books where he fought them. And we are wrapping that all up now with Avengers Death Trap the vault uh, and actually they've reprinted this a couple times and one of the versions they reprinted was like a smaller size because this is obviously like a magazine size uh, version that they did this is the original printing of it came out in september of 1991 and it was ten dollars when it came out um so yeah you know people talk about expensive books nowadays um but uh, yeah this one was 10 bucks uh, but it was still cool you know i liked it uh ron Lim did the artwork on it and uh, danny fingeroff wrote the story i think this is like the third or fourth appearance of venom so after venom appeared a couple times in Spider-Man, uh, an amazing Spider-Man drawn by McFarlane and then Eric Larson. He uh, got arrested and he was sent to the vault. And uh, so this is really early on in Venom's like career in comic books because he first appeared in 1988 and then he reappeared like around issue 350 or, 36, or 315 or 316 of Amazing Spider-Man, which was like a year later in 1989. And then I think we didn't get much maybe except his uh, his appearance in the, uh, the, what was it, Marvel Comics Presents with Wolverine. He might have appeared there too around the same time as this or or at that time, I can't remember. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was, was he didn't have a lot of appearances at this point. So when they were like, all right, we're going to drop Venom into an Avenger story, uh, I was like, whoa, what's happening with Venom? What's going on with him? Why are you putting him in Avengers? And uh, and so what they did was they came up with like a prison break storyline. Uh, so the vault is this thing, uh, like this like jail, I guess, in the Rocky Mountains that appeared in the comics like in 1986. And it ended up, I think the last time we saw it was in Heroes for Hire number one. Maybe someone can correct me on that one. But I think it was Heroes for Hire, which came out in 1997, which I love that book. So that's the only reason I kind of remember it. Uh, but I think that was the last time we've seen The Vault, unless it's appeared in other books that I just, you know, didn't get my eyes on at some point. Uh, but uh, The Vault was like this maximum security prison, kind of like how the raft is for like uh, the Brian Michael Bendis generation of Avengers fans. Uh, that seems like every like 10, 15 to 20 years, there's like always like a new big prison that they use. Uh, so The Vault was the one they used in like the mid 80s all the way up to the mid 90s, uh, almost into the late 90s, I think. And so uh, so The Vault, like I said, uh, Truman Marsh, he was the warden of it. He hated superheroes, hated people with superpowers. He had like a real big prejudice against anyone. Didn't matter if you're a mutant or human or whatever. If you had power. Hours, he didn't like you so he was somehow ended up getting uh, to be in charge of this prison and the prison itself had like a direct line from the White House so if there was ever like a breakout like a massive breakout the president could just press a button and blow the entire place up it would of course it would have to go through like executive order or whatever they'd have to like you know run through some red tape first but in case there was danger of any of these criminals or all of these criminals getting out uh, they had like a, a fail switch they put a bomb like underneath this place and what happened was Truman Marsh like uh you know retrofitted that bomb and he took control of it he knew where it was uh and found it and then reprogrammed it and now if the president presses that button the place will not blow up only if truman marsh in his office presses the button will the place blow up and he's willing to sacrifice his own life if it means the safety of everyone if it kills all of these inmates so already the guy's not really all there uh, he has good motivations, I guess, and most of this place is full of criminals, uh, but at the same time, like, he's willing to just wipe out everybody, including the guards and all the other people that work in the facility. He's willing to kill everybody, even people that might even be innocent that are in here. Um, you know, yeah, so it's it's pretty crazy. So Truman Marsh is the villain of this story, and Eddie Brock is 
kind of like this middleman. Uh, he kind of leads the outbreak in a way. Uh, there's a guy named Ment Mentolo, and he's getting experimented on by Truman. So Truman starts experimenting on these metahumans, and he's like, I don't know if he's trying to take away their powers or dampen their powers or whatever it is he's trying to do, uh, but it ends up uh, increasing Mentolo's powers. So he reaches out psychically and is able to talk to Eddie Brock in the symbiote. And Eddie Brock in this story, it's pretty funny because the book opens with him, and it's just like a close-up of his face. So it's very clear, hey, we want to put Venom front and center. Like, this was to sell that book they were like we want people to know that this is going to be a venom story um even though it has the avengers and everybody else in it and there's truman marsh he's like the next page um so they dive right into the storyline you start off with uh, some bad guys that are going to you know they, they're at court and they're getting like you know they're getting charged for the crimes and stuff that they do and they get sent to the vault and so you're kind of seeing the process of what happens and you have the guardsmen that are there um later on become the jury um and so the guardsmen they show up and they have captain america and hank pym and they're like all right we're gonna arrest this guy and we're gonna send him to the vault and so you're kind of seeing the process like i said and it cuts over and Eddie Brock meanwhile he's uh, typing actually you see him typing here it's because he's been given the job of uh, editor of the inmate uh, newspaper so I guess the inmates get their own newspaper and Eddie Brock is the one who writes up all the stories for the inmates I guess is this their way of like keeping Venom docile um, I don't really know but all these uh, some of the inmates that behave a little bit more they get a little bit more, you know, uh, better treatment, kind of like Andy Dufresne and stuff like that, and, you know, and uh, Shawshank Redemption. So, yeah, he gets to type up these papers, and uh, and this is because Venom, obviously Eddie Brock, doesn't think he belongs with other criminals. He only hates Spider-Man, so he's kind of, like, secluded to himself, but Mentolo was in the cell next to him. So as he's getting experimented on, he reaches out psychically and talks to Venom and the symbiote, or Eddie and the symbiote, and says, look, let's break out of here like look what they're doing to us it's only a matter of time before they start experimenting on you who you know you're just their poster boy right now but chance are they're going to come after you they're going to come after your symbiote and uh he's kind of like you know what you might be right so let's do it so you know eddie brock and mentolo rally together all the inmates and they cause a massive breakout and that's pretty much the story i gotta say like there's not it's not like a super rich or in-depth storyline it is fun though um like i said in the intro like with the way i read the back cover here um, you know, they, they describe it as like a disaster movie or a prison movie. Uh, this is kind of like their version of like an 80s action movie. But, you know, because it's Marvel, they're like, oh, we want to throw in a bunch of characters. So like, you know, they have like Captain America, She-Hulk's in this, uh, Iron Man, Hank Pym is a big part of it, uh, Wonder Man, uh, Hawkeye Vision, and Wasp. And then we also have Freedom Force. And sorry, I had I had to make a list of the members of Freedom Force because I, I couldn't remember uh, off the top of my head. But we have Avalanche, Blob, Crimson Commando, uh, Mystique, who's kind of the leader of, of uh, Freedom Force, Pyro, and Super Saber. And these are characters that were, uh, you know, former villains, former Brotherhood of the Evil Mutants members, you know, different X-Men villains. Um, and the government decided, you know what, we're going to put some of these mutants to the, uh, like, make our own Suicide Squad. They're kind of like an answer, like Marvel's answer to Suicide Squad in a way. And we're going to put them on a bunch of missions, and they have to do what we say, or else we're going to, you know, take them down. So uh, that's what happens. And so you have Captain America and Hank Pym showing up. And this is when Hank Pym had powers to where if he touched anything, it would shrink uh, or grow. So uh, he used that to his advantage to fight like Orca here. He like and then he created like a, or tapped on a small hair dryer, made it big and then used it on Orca to like heat Orca up and stuff. So, yeah, a lot of funny, silly, stupid things happen in this book. Um, but then you have like Freedom Force coming in and they get the call about the, uh, you know, the the breakout and stuff. And so the, the government is like, we're worried and the president's worried because his button's not working. So it's like, let's send Freedom Force in and we'll have them deal with it. And then the Avengers on their own volition are like, you know what? We heard about this breakout. A uh, silent alarm went off. We're going to go investigate it too. So then you have the Avengers here coming in to uh, join the battle. And meanwhile, for the most part, it's just Venom, you know, trying to lead the charge. He's kind of the man in charge in a way, but other inmates are challenging him. So he does get into fights with Vision, like he does fight Vision here and the Avengers in some of the scenes, uh, but he does fight other inmates because they don't like the direction he's going in. He wants to get everyone out, uh, you know, carefully. And, uh, and uh, there's other villains who are like, no, let's, you know, bypass all the security. Let's, all the things that are, that might kill us. If we just all move in a straight line, some of us may die, but maybe some of us will get out. And Venom's like, no, we're not going to go that route. We're going to try to, to go a different route. We're going to try to be a little bit smarter. And so Venom, doesn't like this he's like hey i'm in charge here and you know th these other inmates are uh, against him and against like the way he wants to do things and that's pretty much the whole story through the whole thing and then plus the bomb gets activated so truman marsh is like all right 
I'm pressing the button. This is getting out of control, but now the Avengers are here, Freedom Force are here. I can not only wipe out all these villains, but I'll be able to wipe out some of these superheroes that just cause escalation, that cause you know everything to just keep getting exponentially worse for the rest of us civilians out in the world. So uh, he sets the bomb off, and now the bomb is going... And they got less than 10 minutes to uh, stop this. So Captain America is working really hard. And, uh, you know, with his Avengers, they're trying to team up with Freedom Force. But Freedom Force is like, well, we're former villains. And some of these guys in here are former allies. You know, do we help them? Do we assist them? Or do we, you know, do we do the right, or do we do the thing, the mission that we're sent in for? And then in the middle, like I said, you have like Venom fighting Armadillo and all these other villains and Rhino who are, you know, kind of don't want to side with him anymore. Uh, because you see that he's he's even starting to use some people. And uh, so some people are with Venom and then some some people aren't and it kind of goes back and forth through that but you don't get a, a ton in here as far as like venom arc or story uh it's pretty much just venom trying you know he's like hey i'm an anti-hero he's like or trying to embrace that side a little bit but it's also like the writing is a little inconsistent because some things he do are very villainous, but that also falls in line with early days Venom where he kind of did straddle that line. Some days he would do things that are pretty monstrous, like, you know, uh, terrorize Mary Jane Watson uh, that are almost, you know, pretty much unforgivable things. And then there's other stuff that he would do that you're like, all right, it's that's, you know, not crossing the line so much. So like, yeah, terrorizing someone's, you know, Spider-Man's wife. It's like, well, he did it to get back at Spider-Man and to scare Spider-Man but it obviously traumatized Mary Jane. And I think if Eddie knew the psychological effects that that would have on her, uh, he probably, you know, at least Eddie Brock might've restrained himself a little bit, but he was so caught up in his rage and anger at that point, um, uh, as well as the symbiote's rage, that he it kind of led him down a darker path. As, so in the beginning, he is kind of more of a villain uh, and less anti-hero, but he, he still struggles and, uh, and straddles that line a little bit, even in this book. Um, so even though it's inconsistent on the surface, it's still, it's like, well, I guess you can make an argument that it's keeping with the character because he at least you're like all right he's he's still taking down some bad guys and he still has his own motivations and stuff so uh yeah and it's still it kind of works in a way but uh yeah the artwork like i said though is, is fantastic i think ron Lim is a really great venom artist he's definitely he drew the last half of lethal protector so i know a lot of people credit like bagley for doing a bunch of stuff on on venom um i think bagley at this point like by the mid 90s bagley probably drew venom the most because you had you know, McFarlane pretty much just in the early days uh, of his creation, like Amazing Spider-Man 300, and I think even Amazing Spider-Man 315, 316, 317. But then like when Venom came back in 330, when he actually escapes from the vault, I think that was Eric Larson moving forward. And then Bagley came in during the, uh, you know, the Carnage storyline and then into Maximum Carnage. So because of all the Maximum Carnage issues that Bagley did, I think that put him, and then the Amazing Spider-Man issues 374 and 275, and then the three issues of... Um, Venom Lethal Protector he did, I think that pushed him a little bit further ahead of everyone else as far as how many times he drew Venom in the short amount of time that he worked on the character. Um, but he definitely put a stamp on. I think a lot of these guys did, but I think Ron Lim put a really good stamp on Venom as well. And I like his look for Venom. He made him really big and meaty looking. Um, so then, you know, uh, Venom kind of comes to a truce with some of the villains he teamed up with and they realize that the bomb is going to go off. And so Venom's like, all right, well, we can't have that. There will be innocent lives lost. Uh, so let's do something. So he kind of trusts in the bad guy uh, that was fighting against him. And then with Iron Man and other heroes, they kind of trust them to deactivate the bomb. And surprisingly, they do. Uh, I think you have Hank Pym here. I can't remember the villain who stands up against Venom. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. And then Iron Man. Uh, they all kind of working together, defuse the bomb. And uh, they do it with, like, of course, one second to spare because it's a, you know, late 80s, early 90s action movie. Um, and then, yeah, and then you have uh, a Thunderball. I think it was, yeah, that's his name, Thunderball. Um, so, yeah, so Venom and Thunderball, everyone's cheering for Thunderball. They're like, he did it. He saved us. And Venom then gets mad. He's like, no, uh, you know, it was because of me. I allowed him to save you, blah, blah, blah. And so they get into a fight. And then, boom, that's when the big battle really occurs in the last few pages of the book, uh, the fight you've been waiting for, where it's like all the inmates versus the Avengers. Um, and Freedom Force, they kind of slink out the back and get away. And Venom, by the way, is, you know, having been used now by Truman Marsh uh, in multiple ways throughout this book, he's like, I want my revenge. So he actually uses his uh, blending in powers or not, not holograph. I mean, he's not like blending in like a predator, not because I think those powers come later with a different, you know, uh, symbiote or something, but he does blend into the darkness and he's sneaking after Truman Marsh, who's trying to get away uh, while the, the ruckus is going on. So, you know, Iron Man and the Avengers, they take down the bad guys, they recapture everyone, they put them back in their cells, and then meanwhile you have Venom here, and Truman Marsh is going to come down and just 
blow up the bomb. He's like, you know what? There's one second left. I'm going to go down there and just destroy it anyway. It'll cause an explosion uh, and trigger reaction throughout the whole place and blow it up. And he takes a guardman, you know, like gauntlet that he has here and to defend himself, but also to blow this thing up. And that's when Venom shows up and Venom does, you know, his version of heroics uh, by throwing Truman Marsh into the uh, fire down there and killing him. Uh, but then once he does, you know, uh, Hank Pym and Freedom Force show up and the Avengers show up and they take Venom down and put him back in his cell. And then meanwhile, um, what was it? Uh, Radioactive Man from the Thunder, later on in the Thunderbolts, uh, he gets activated. His powers are about to go supernova and Iron Man does his, you know, selfless move of taking uh, Radioactive Man and flying him out of the place before it blows up the entire location. So uh, he does and he saves the day and his armor survives the Radioactive Blast and the heroes unite, and all the villains are then put back in their cells. So, yeah, it was a pretty fun storyline. Um, you get a little bit of, of Venom versus the Avengers. Like I said, he fights, I think there he gets a standoff with Captain America at one point. Um, then he gets, uh, you know, against Vision. Vision tries to, like, phase through him, and they and they get in an interact, uh, you know, a battle, a confrontation with each other. And then it's mostly just Venom versus, like, other inmates, uh, and trying to take down, like, Thunderball and Ulysses Claw and all these other people uh, who are standing against him. Uh, and then at the end, he's the one who gets the, the kill on uh, Truman Marsh. So there is justice in this book, I guess, in a way, and it's Venom's justice uh, where he kills Truman Marsh, the, the enemy of this book. And I like how it's set up, because right at the beginning, you get Venom is, like, your main character, kind of, and then you get Truman Marsh is, like, your villain, and then even though they kind of lose them a little bit in the middle because they're, you know, bringing in the Avengers and Freedom Force, the book does end with the two of them in a confrontation. So I kind of like how that was set up there visually with the art and how it wrapped up in the ending. So let me know what you think. Have you read Avengers Death Trap The Vault? Or do you own the reprinted version, which is called Venom The Vault um, or Venom Death Trap The Vault? So they changed the name a couple different times. Uh, during a couple different reprintings of it. But uh, this originally came out in September of 1991, and like I said, very early on in Venom's career, probably his fourth or fifth maybe appearance ever in comics was in this right here, and they already threw him in with the Avengers, which was really awesome. So yeah, this wraps up our Venom verses, but don't worry, we have a lot of other stuff coming up where Venom is fighting against other heroes. Uh, we're going to tackle the rest of the 90s miniseries, and we're going to try to wrap all that up before August 6th, because that's when our Summer of Carnage starts with Absolute Carnage number one. So I'm going to do my best to get through Along Came Spider, uh, Tooth and Claw, and uh, the finale, and all these other stories, Hunted and Hunger. I'm going to try to get through them as best I can, and as many of them as I can before October or August 6th. I'm sorry, August 6th. Uh, before I get to before we get to that day, and then we'll jump into our Summer of Carnage. But if we still have a few Eddie Brock stories wrap up, we'll do that during the Summer of Carnage for sure. Because I want all that stuff done, and I want to focus just on Absolute Carnage and any movie news that comes out. That's all I want to focus on in August, September, and October. And then as we get into November, when you know Absolute Carnage ends, uh, they added a fifth issue to it, so it was a four issue miniseries. Now it's going to be five issues. So when the fifth issue comes out in November. From then onward, we're going to probably start focusing on Flash Thompson. Um, and then also to fill in some of the spaces in Summer of Carnage, we might do another Carnage Week as well. Um, or we'll save it for November and uh, and we'll get into it then because we got to get through the Axis storylines and uh, Superior Carnage and some of that stuff too. So we got a lot coming up on this channel and some of you probably saw this. If you haven't, on my Instagram, uh, I am currently in the middle of drawing a Summer of Carnage poster. Uh, this is an homage to my favorite movie, which is The Day the Earth Stood Still. And the original image was Gort, the robot, um, his face here and his hand over the planet Earth, and then like another planet in the background. So I'm drawing Clintar in the background. I have Carnage here, and his hand's going to be over Earth. And then I'm going to try to find someone who will color it for me. I'll pay them, uh, pay them, uh, you know, like 50, 60 bucks, whatever I can uh, come up with, um, or 100 bucks if that's their rate, whatever it is. I can't do more than 100, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm going to try to stay around the 50 or 60 dollar range. So if you know anyone out there who likes to color and who does a really good job of it, let me know and uh, comment down below and I'll try to see if they're available to do a coloring job on this and we can have our own Summer of Carnage poster for the show. So thank you all very much. I appreciate you watching the show. As always, 370 episodes. We've got 30 more to go before episode. 400 and we're going to be there before you know it because with absolute carnage or summer of carnage coming up we're going to be doing episodes every week focusing on that mini series and all the tie-ins so we're going to get to episode 400 really quickly we're going to fly by it we have some interviews coming up i got a lot of stuff you know fun stuff planned for all of you guys so i appreciate the support so much and i appreciate your patience on waiting for me to upload videos i will have more for you very soon thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff definitely let me know your thoughts of this book down in the comments below and we'll continue our conversation down there I'll see you in the future. Peace.